spill a little dota I hear you man Hi, I'm Jesse Ravel Reviews Reviewer Jesse Ravel of Jesse Ravel Reviews, and I'm here to review Dota Dragon's Blood Book 1. Just as a warning, there will be heavy spoilers, so if you haven't watched the series already, you have been warned. When I first heard that there would be a Dota animated series, my first question was, which heroes are going to be in it? And when I watched the first trailer and I saw that it was Dragonite, I wondered if it would even be interesting. But now that I have watched the show, I think that Davion was a great choice as the lead character. I think that choosing a human hero is the right way to go, and the show does a great job at characterizing him. We first encounter Davion when he arrives to aid a group of soldiers that are fighting a dragon. They are clearly outpowered and overwhelmed. We learn very quickly why Davion is called the Dragon Knight, as he systematically takes on and kills the dragon. Davion consistently displays a tough attitude along with the mentality that he can take on the world alone. He has a run-in with a bandit who threatens to return with his brothers the following day to kill Davion. Davion responds to the threat the following morning by asking the innkeeper for a sword so that he can fight the bandits, despite the fact that he will be vastly outnumbered. He feels like he can't back down from the fight because he is a dragon knight and that doing so would ruin his public image. Despite putting on a tough guy act, Davion shows a lot of vulnerability over the course of Book 1. Whether he is afraid of what Caden will think of him, or hugging Marana when he sees her again, or telling Marana that he is terrified, or when he is practicing saying goodbye to Marana, and tells Marcy that he will miss her too. Davion is a relatable and completely humanized character, the perfect protagonist. Obviously, Marana and Davion end up forming a close relationship, but Marana goes through a decent amount of development over Book 1 as well. In the beginning, she is someone that is hesitant to help others and only ends up helping Davion because Marcy pressures her to do so. By the end of Book 1, Marana willingly chooses to help an extremely injured Luna, despite the things she has done to others. She went from helping Davion because she felt pressured to do so, to making the choice herself because she thought it was the right thing to do. Yet there are many times when Marana lets her emotions get the best of her, like when Fimran is telling Davion that she has no one to go home to. Marana becomes angry and calls Fimran selfish and stupid, and tells Davion not to take pity on her, because the whole situation is her fault. Davion asks Marana why she was using him. This situation could have been avoided if Marana had told Davion about Fimran earlier, yet she chose to wallow in anger and jealousy. In the tent later that night, Marana says that she should sleep on it and talk to Davion in the morning, as he will listen and understand. She admits that she shares some of the blame since she chose to say nothing to Davion. Marana is aware of her tendency to act emotionally, yet she is unable to control her actions appropriately. Like Davion, Marana is relatable and completely humanized, and offsets Davion's traits nicely. It is fun to watch their dynamic take form over the course of Book 1. On the other hand, Luna is absolutely terrifying in this series. She marches with the Dark Moon Order and burns villages down and massacres populations, doing so with terrifying brutality. Invoker was one of the best characters in the show. He isolates himself in his tower after he loses his daughter Philomena. Philomena dies because Salamani refused to heal her, on the basis that her daughter did not worship her as a goddess. The show does a great job at making us feel Invoker's loneliness. Invoker prepares the lotuses in a box sealed with magic, which will only open if the Dark Moon Order agrees to leave, but everyone is unaware of the fact that he has struck a bargain with Terror Blade. When Luna accepts the conditions to open Invoker's magical box, the box opens and turns the sky into a bloody red. We see Terror Blade rip a priestess open as he takes form in the physical world. I have to say that Terror Blade is absolutely awesome in this series. He is said to have found truth in his prison in Foulfell as he fused thought and action, remaking creation in his own infernal image. We see the way that Terror Blade manipulates people's thoughts when he takes over the captain. He taunts the captain, saying that he is sad, pathetic, and a coward. He tells the captain that they can slay the sleeping dragon together. Terror Blade targets people's weaknesses and promises greater power if only they let him in. Terror Blade struck a bargain with Invoker, seven souls for one. Salamene's. As Terrorblade fights Salamene, he continues breaking her down mentally, as she says that she made herself a god so that she can never be alone. Terrorblade tells Salamene that Philomena died hating her, and this rots Salamene's heart. 
as she lays groaning and bleeding. Terror Blade has this really awesome line. Do you know what a demon calls a god who does not know worship? A god who does not know love. Food. Invoker approaches and asks Salamani if she loves him. A satisfying cliffhanger. Overall, Dota Dragon's Blood Book 1 features many great characters and interesting subplots with an engaging overarching plot that pulls everything together. However, I did find that the show suffered from some pacing issues. At times, it feels like it is trying to tell too many stories in too little time. This gets a bit of an explanation from Ashley Edward Miller, the show's creator, on Twitter, when he said, We began believing we had 30 minutes of animation per episode. Very deep into the animatic stage, that was reduced for a variety of esoteric production reasons to 25 minutes. So we'd anticipated about 40 more minutes in the season than what you saw in the final episodes. It cannot be understated how much of a negative impact cut content can have on a movie or TV show. Taking things slow and building characters and their relationships with one another is vital in pulling the viewer in and absorbing them into the world that is being created on screen. That being said, I am very hopeful for future seasons, as I would love to see how the story continues. In terms of the show's form, I will say that the show features a consistently solid animation style. The show has this really beautiful intro featuring the Lotuses, Marana, Davion, and Invoker. At the beginning of episode 1, we also get this stunning look at Oracle, and the creation of the universe, and the separation into two factions, the Radiant and Dire. Not only does the show have solid animation, but there are also moments where camera movements are utilized in order to exaggerate feelings and ideas. I think this is best exemplified when the dragons ask Davion why people kill dragons. Davion says he kills dragons because he hates them, as the camera swirls around him and zooms in on his face, giving greater weight to what Davion is saying. But the animation isn't all great. I found the way that the noses were drawn to be really weird at times. There is almost always this line on either side of the nose that sometimes jumps from side to side as the character turns their head back and forth. I think it would have looked better without the line at all, or perhaps if the area had been shaded in instead. At times, there is also a weird mix of 2D and 3D animation. While I mostly have praise for the 2D animation style that this show uses, I think that the 3D animation style is poorly executed in comparison. Not only was it a bit jarring to watch, but I don't think it really added anything of substance to the scenes where it was used. Now, I want to talk about several things that I couldn't fit anywhere else in my script. It was really cool to see some items, races, and abilities from the game. Bram uses a TP scroll. Marana uses Starstorm. Luna uses Lucent Beam. The Gem of True Sight reveals the Invisible Tower. And Terror Blade uses most of his abilities. There are bounty hunters, alchemist ogres, and axes. Some recognizable items also appear in the background of the shopkeeper's shop. Speaking of the shopkeeper, I was glad to see him make an appearance, but I think he was a bit weird looking. I wish he looked more like he did in the Dota 2 Gamescom trailer. I liked when Marcy whistled and Marana shot an arrow into the forest, resulting in killing a rabbit which they roast and eat. This sets up Marana and Marcy's team dynamic. We see this later on in battle when Marana shoots arrows at the bandits that Davion is fighting as Marcy whistles out the targets. I also have to give praise to Marcy as a character. She is strong, smart, caring, loyal, and honorable. I believe that she is the most idealized character on the show, but she is also incredibly human, which makes her such a great character. There is a scene where Davion is bathing in a lake while Marana and Marcy look at a map. And him. Got thirst? Speaking of thirst, why is Invoker watching this? The song that the elven children sing about Mene is also very catchy. I must be worthy in her sight. Praise the moon of May -Nay. So in conclusion, I thought that Dota Dragon's Blood Book 1 was great. I have long thought that the Dota universe would work well in an animated setting, and Dota Dragon's Blood Book 1 delivers. We get to see many Dota heroes, items, and abilities in a fleshed out story, and it is not just for hardcore Dota fans. I think it appeals to anyone interested in fantasy settings or animation. I hope that in future seasons, they are given the time to flesh out the characters and stories a little bit more. 
I am going to give Dota Dragon's Blood Book 1 a score of 8 out of 10. I want to end this review with some recommendations. If you are looking for a new game to play, don't play Dota 2. Seriously, stay away. If you want another animated series based on a video game that targets an adult audience, I would recommend Castlevania. While I didn't like it as much as the Dota series, it was still enjoyable overall. Finally, go watch Zack Snyder's Justice League because it is amazing. Dota. I hear you, man.